So one of the things you're going to do for setup is you are going to place three wooden fences around each of these breweries that are on the board. Six of them out there. Each player is going to get 25 uh, money. Each player is going to get three action cards to use. And the backs have different uh, abilities. Each player is going to get a number of cubes that rep represent shares that they're going to be investing in companies. There's going to be a bunch of brewery contracts. These are going to get shuffled up and they're going to get placed on the board for each of the different breweries. And then they're also going to be placed in the um, buildings where the, brew the beer is brewed in the going to shuffle them up and then we're just going to deal them out randomly. And these are going to be the starting contracts for these different uh, beer gardens. After the starting contracts are out, you're going to see what you have left and you're going to place them in the appropriate beer gardens. This brewery has all of its contracts out here. And there's one here, one here, and one here. And so that is going to probably play a role into where people might select to start building up uh, influence. We have two chips. One is known as the pretty Ra waitress chip and the other one is like the drunken patron chip. And so the uh, pretty waitress is going to start over in this uh, beer garden over here. And at a scoring round, if she's in your beer garden, it's going to give you an extra $20 to that beer garden. And the drunken patron or drunken bum as they call them, starts over in the uh, Eagle uh, Beer Garden and that's going to be a, a penalty of a loss of $12 if that person is in your beer garden uh, at any scoring round. Next you're going to take your cards, you're going to shuffle them up and you're just going to mix them all up and you're going to give a certain number to each player based on um, how many players you have and you do not pass out the pretty waitress or the drunken patron uh, cards to them. So ideally what they say is pass them out then shuffle those in later. Next what's going to happen is each player is going to look at the cards they were dealt. Uh, so since I'm playing a three player game there's going to be eight cards to a player. It'd be only six in a four player game and they're going to look at what they have and what's going to happen is out of these eight cards that they have six of them are going to be turned up and have uh, markers placed out on the board. So this will be the blue player is going to reveal these six and what we have here is he's going to put an influence cube in the bear brewery and this brewery over here and this brewery over here and this beer factory over here and then he's got two here for this uh, beer factory here. So why did he choose these? Well, this beer factory, all of its beer is out already in the beer gardens. So this is, if uh, this stays empty, this is going to pay out pretty well. So he had a card for this brewery, which has this beer, this beer uh, supplier, which is this one, is supplying it. So um, that's a chance for double money, getting money from all the money that they make, they make from the patrons and then all the money that has to be paid to the beer garden for using their beer. Same here, this, uh, the beer that's provided to this beer garden is again from here, so he placed a marker there. This one has a brewery from this one, so he's going to try and get double connection there. If we go and we're going to look at yellow. So yellow has the eagle, so he's going to place a marker there. Then he has this beer garden here, and then he has the one with the deer or elk or whatever that is, another one for that place, and then the one with the tree, which is down here, finally for a sixth place, again with the tree one. And once these cards are revealed, they are uh, just removed from the game. So he has two markers in this place here. Again, that's supplied by this brewery. He has no influence there. The deer, he has two influence there, so it's supplied by the brewery down here, which uh, he has no influence in. But what he's doing is he's getting majorities for um, 
these beer gardens because what happens is at the end of each round all the money that this that each beer garden earns half of it goes to the brewery that supplies it the beer and half of it stays to pay out all the shareholders and these cubes represent uh, shares he invested in this brewery which supplies this uh, beer garden so again all the money that goes here half of it's going to go here so if he is in influence here he's going to get some money and then also he's going to get some money from here then we're going to look at the green players cards okay, so he's going to go this way so the tree so that's over here so now he's coming into that territory he's got another one with a tree so now they are doubled up split on ownership there this beer garden here All right, he's going back to that beer garden. So now he has more influence than yellow there now. The eagle. Right there. And the last one for him is the brewery, this one here. So he's the sole person with influence there. And those cards are going to be discarded from the game. And that is the setup for establishing where you're going to have your stock have is each player is going to start placing their like bosses out on the board and each player is going to place um you place two but since i'm playing a three-player game each person is going to place three one at a time so blue is the first player so he'll place three and he has to place one at a time so where he has to decide where does he want to be the boss of and blue's going to start by being the boss of this brewery out here the one that has all its beer out there and then he has the most influence and he's going to try and make sure that he has the boss of that and why do you want to be the boss well when the shares pay out um, if they don't pay out equally, whatever's left over goes to the boss. So let's say, here, let's say this place made uh, $11, okay? Well, it's going to go 3 6 9 all right, and then 10 11 So that means $2 is going to be left over. Well, who does that $2 go to? It goes to whichever player has their boss figure in this location. So all, the, all these other uh, breweries have two beers to go out. So Yellow sees that green has a lot of influence here but yellow doesn't have any uh place up there but yellow sees okay there's some competition here there's split so yellow wants to grab that so yellow's going to place a boss there um because it's going to be easier for green to steal the boss from this position than it is from this position so then next uh next it's green's turn so green will just go ahead and place a boss in this brewery he has the majority influence here and it's going to go back to blue all right, so blue is going to place his next one, and blue's going to place. All right, he's going to place here. The starting waitress is here, or the uh, pretty waitress is there. Maybe there will be cards to move, or maybe there won't that come out. But he's going to kind of take control of that because she pays an extra twenty dollars. So he's going to go there. Then it's yellow's turn. Yellow's going to go here because he's going to be competing with green. Then green has to play somewhere. Um, so green will just go over in this brewery that he owns there. Then Blue's going to place his third one, and Blue's going to place here because the pretty waitress can move between those two. If he goes over here, um, it's more likely that the drunken patron is going to go over to his that beer garden, and that will cost money. Uh, then next is Yellow's turn. So Yellow's just going to put one where it has influence here, and then Green places its final one. And there's one spot here and one spot there. And so he is going to, uh, I don't know, he's going to go for the brewery. Why not? He's played over a period of three weeks, and uh, so seven days a week. So there's seven rounds, seven turns in a round, three rounds, or however you want to do that. And so it's Blue's turn first. And so, with, well, not so much first. What it does is everyone has three cards, three actions, and they're going to choose one of their three actions, and they're going to be resolved in this order. First, anyone who places... This card is going to be able to expand their beer garden by making it larger. These spaces here pay $4 a spot at the end of the week. And if you have one with the uh, umbrella on it, it's going to pay $8 for that spot. This is to either place one of your pawns to take control over either a beer garden or a uh, brewery. Or this thing here is to say you want to uh, change a contract. So like let's say green wanted to take this contract and move it in you know over here so that at the end of the week this uh beer garden pays out all of their money to this building that green is at 
instead of uh, the blue building as it stands now. And then lastly, you got uh, this here. What's going to happen? You have a draw deck. And what's going to happen is the top two cards are going to be revealed for the round. So you know that these two cards are available. If you buy one of these two cards, you have to uh, do the effect of it right away. Or you can pay for an unknown card. And if you buy an unknown card, you either add it to your hand or you play it right away. Unless it happens to be the pretty waitress or the drunken patron. If this card that you buy happens to be that, you have to play it right away. Otherwise, you can decide whether you want to put it into your hand or play right away. So, um, with this card, if someone were to buy this card, they, were, they would be able to move the pretty waitress. So it's right here. They can move it either in two spaces this way, or two spaces that way. The pretty waitress and the drunken patron can never occupy the same spot. If the drunken patron had been at this bar and this had to, was going to move in this direction, you do not count this space, so it would be one, two. Not one, two, but it would be skip one, then two. All right. All right, so here are the cards that each person selected. Then what happens is they get churned over at the same time. So this is what each person chose. All right, so you review, first you do expansion. So yellow wants to expand. So yellow is going to expand over here where yellow has sole control of this area. Now, since he was the only person to choose this card, he gets to expand twice. If someone else had also chosen expand, he'd only get to expand once, but he gets to expand twice. So he's gonna expand one, two, and he's gonna take over this area here. So now this is at the end of the round, right, as it stands, he's gonna pay four, eight, then $16 to him. This card goes back for him to use another time, and his turn is over. Next, these actions get revealed, so, um, Green wants to either place a pawn to take over uh, an area or a uh, or a tile to change a contract at a place. So what he's going to do is when you turn over this card, you can either just put your pawn somewhere or if you have a card for the area you want to place in, you can put influence in there first and then place. So he's going to put influence first in this area and then he's going to take control of it. And there's no competition there, so that's fine. No one's going to be able to stop him from doing that. This card is removed from the game. And this goes back to a green player's hand. And now there is um, the blue player's turn. And the blue player wants to uh, buy one of these contracts. So these are going to get wiped out at the end. Now what Blue was doing was he was going to, um, he's first to act, so whoever chose this action first, uh, or however many people chose this action, he would get to um, go first, because he's the first player. And his goal was he doesn't want to lose the waitress from his area over there, so he was going to get this card and take it so no one else could uh, could use it. Now, the card's going to be taken out anyway. It's going to go to the bottom of the deck, so it'll still be in the game, but it'll be way down there. So what Blue can do now, since there is no competition, though originally he was going to take this, maybe he wants to grab this card. And that's what he's going to do. So he's going to take this card, but he has to do the action right away, so that means he puts a cube into that brewery. Uh, yeah, brewery. So over here is the brewery, and he's going to put one cube into there. So now he's going to get... Right now, if the round ended, however much money that this place made, it would be split 50-50 between green and blue. Anything left over would go to the green player because green has the boss there. This card was chosen, so it's removed from the game. This goes back to the blue player. And then this card gets turned over and placed on the bottom of the deck. And for the next round, two new cards are revealed. Another thing, uh, the green player who chose this, since he was the only player who chose this, he gets to do this action twice. Just like if you're the only person who does this, you get to do it twice. And the other thing I forgot to tell you is uh, the blue player who chose to do the buy a card action, that costs him $2 to buy one of those cards. So he's going to spend $2 and that's going to go to the bank. Now, um, if 
two people choose to buy a card, then it goes from $2 a card to $5 a card. And if three or more, three or four essentially, <coughs> people choose to do this action, I think it's $8 per card you want to buy. And again, if there's two, only two people doing the action, they have a choice of taking either one of the face-up cards or the unknown card. Uh, the thing is, if someone buys this card, it does not get replaced. So let's say let's say three people went and did this action. All right, one person, let's say, buys this card. The other person buys this card. The third person has to buy this card. All right, and if it's three people, it's going to cost them $8 to do that. Um, or I'm sure they can just forfeit their action if they don't want to buy an unknown. But the benefit to buying an unknown is you could put this card into your hand, and I'll eventually show you what that means. Since, as I was saying, since Green gets to do two actions, the second action he's going to do is, since he's the boss of this building, he's going to remove this beer contract and put it back over to this brewery where uh, the blue player is, and he's going to move in the beer contract from the brewery that he owns. All right, so since he got to do the action twice, one was to put in his boss token, which allowed him to also put in a share token there, and, um, and then also change out who supplies that beer garden. And the start player token leaves blue, and it'll go to the yellow player. So it's uh, day two of the week, and so everyone chose their cards, so they're going to flip them over. Alright, so we have one person who's trying these cards play before these cards. So green has this, even though yellow is the first player. It doesn't matter. That would only matter if uh, yellow had played the same thing as green. So green played this card. <clears throat> what he's going to do is he has a card for the bear area, which is right over here. So he is going to try... First he's going to play his bear card to put in a cube there. So now we have blue with one and green with one and blue cannot stop green from uh, changing ownership of this beer garden because uh, blue would need to have like more influence than all other cubes here that aren't his color combined and so since it's a one-to-one -one ratio there's nothing he can do so now green has control of this beer garden which has the waitress in it which pays out an additional twenty dollars so if <coughs> Right now, if this pays out um, the way it is, it would pay 20 plus 4, which is uh, $24. And then that would split between this, uh, this supplier and the garden, so that would be 12 and 12. And then that 12 and 12 would split 6 and 6, so it doesn't really matter right now. But if, uh, if you know, if it moved over 1, and what would that be, 28... 28 would be 14 and 14. 14 would split 7. So, <coughs> so it works. It's probably if like another person comes in here that's really going to change things. All right, so that's Green's move. So Green gets his card back to his pile, and then this card that he played is out of the game. So now we come back over here, and we have yellow and blue. And they both pulled, did this. There's two cards here, so it's going to cost $5 a piece. Uh, yellow is the star player, so he gets to go first. So what yellow is going to do is he's going to buy this card for $5, and he's going to put an influence cube up here into this place that blue has domination or dominance of and the boss of. And blue, if blue had, had been able to buy first, he could have bought this card just to increase his uh, majority there. But he wasn't able to. Now this card's out of the game. So that leaves blue with the option of buying either this card or taking one off the top. So blue can either buy this card now or take one off the top of here, not knowing what it is. Again, if he takes it off the top and he, he can keep it in his hand to reveal later, or unless it's a, the waitress or the uh, patron, the drunken patron. What he's gonna do, he sees that this card's here and he has you know, control over here for now. So he's just gonna strengthen his control on this area this card will be out of the game, and that's Blue's turn, and now we're going to advance the uh, start token. I just have to take $5 from each person, but uh, then we'll go on to Wednesday. Now Wednesday, everyone's going to reveal their cards. All right, these cards are dead first. Since Yellow is the only person who played an expansion card, he gets to expand two times. Yellow has this area up here. All right, so yellow's going to expand this by two, so he's going to just kind of do this 
to expand this area. He's the only one in control here, so he's going to make all that money unless somebody gets in there. Uh, so that's yellow's turn. This goes back to yellow. And then now we have uh, blue and green wanting to do the same thing. Green has the start player, so green gets to go first. Do I want to do this with green, actually? Yeah, actually, what I think I wanted to do is this. I took the wrong card for green. Green wanted this card. All right, so that leaves blue with this alone. So blue is going to change out a contract. So blue is uh, in charge of this bar here. And though he has stock in here, he sees that green's trying to move in. And green has dominant, or blue has dominance over here. So he's just going to put one of his contracts in here for now. Um, and then he can kind of work on this later, but he might want to just build this up for now. And then, so since he's the only one who did that, he gets to do two actions. So uh, does blue, what cards does blue have? Blue has, uh, here's the thing, blue's cards, you know, he might, he has these two cards to expand, but the thing is, he can only expand into this, the one he can expand into right now, or he could change ownership of another one, he'll probably do that. But he has these two cards that he hasn't played, and he hasn't played them because to move into this um, beer garden, it has this drunken patron here, and so that's going to lose, uh, you know, whatever it is, $12 or something, or $16 or $14. Uh, so he's not using these because he doesn't want to go in there. He's What he's waiting to do is for this card to come up so he can move him, and then he can, like, move into this beer garden. So what he's going to do is he's going to take, Blue's going to take ownership over... Well, I think he's going to take ownership back from green over here. Because there's no way for green to stop him at this point. Unless green has... Bear, green's out of cards. If green if green had bare cards, uh, if someone tries to say... They say, okay, I'm going to take ownership of this. If somebody has a card that they can play that would allow them to add another influence into the area, which would give them majority over all others, they can stop it. So... If blue had said, I'm going to move in here, and then, so it's one-to-one, -one, but if green had a bare card in his hand, he could reveal it and say no, and green would go, I have maj I have total majority, I have, you know, twice as much ownership as the, uh, you know, I have more ownership than anyone else here, I'm not going to allow it, and he could deny blue from moving in, but since green doesn't have that card, what does green, or green does have cards, what's he have? Are these yellows? Those are yellow's cards. Green doesn't have any cards. All right, so yeah, so blue's going to take over ownership of that, which plays into the paying out the supplier, which is his himself, over there. It's green's turn, so green can either pay $2 for this card and move into where blue has total domination over here, or he could play $2 for this card and green could build up influence over in this beer garden. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to place a cube over here, pay two dollars. This card is removed from the game, and the other one goes at the bottom of the stack, and we move on to the next day. All right, so hopefully you get an idea of how the gameplay flows. So then what happens, let's just pretend it's the end of the week, even though we've only done three of the seven days. So you're gonna start here, and you're gonna determine payouts. And actually, let me look and see how much the penalty is for this guy. All right, so the penalty is negative $12. So this beer garden only earns four dollars because it only has one table and a single table is only worth four dollars again the ones with the umbrellas are worth eight so four minus you know this would put them into the negatives but you can't go into negatives so this pays out zero so nobody here is going to get any money for that now let's go over here so the next one is this place and it also only has a size four again these would be larger i've only played there's still four more turns before payout but just for the sake of showing you so then four dollars it's going to go here, all right, so it earns $4, and then half of this money is going to go to the supplier, which is this guy here. So there's going to be $2 here, so that leaves $2 here to be split between any shareholders. There's only two shareholders, blue and green, so this is going to break down into two $1 bills, and green is going to get one of these, and blue is going to get the other one. All right. The role of the uh, boss did not come into play because the money split evenly. Go over here, same thing. Four dollars is going to be split. Two dollars is going to go to this brewery here. So let me just put the two dollars there. All right, so here's the situation. So now you have two dollars left. Well, you can't split two dollars four ways. 
So all two dollars is just going to go to the yellow player because he's um, the boss. So that's just going to go to yellow and green's not going to get anything. So it would have been in green's interest to expand this beer garden so that it made more money so that he would actually get something. Then we go over here. All right, this is going to pay four plus 20 because this place out an extra 20 for the waitress. So that's $24. 24 uh, split $12 is going to go to which brewery? This one over here. And the other 12 is going to get split 6 and 6. So let me put the $12 over here real quick. Alright, next we go to this beer garden. And there's only one owner. So all $4 is going to go, well, $4 is going to go split between him, $2 here, and $2 to this brewery. This one over here that's racking up all the money already. So $2 will go to the brewery. And then $2 will go to the blue uh, player. So, and he would get that. This one, all right, this is going to pay 4 8 16 20 24 dollars He's the only person here, so he's yeah, going to get 12 of it, and 12 of it's going to go to this brewery, which is down over here. All right, so all the beer gardens have paid out, so now you go to the breweries. All right, so this brewery has... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 dollars in it. 14 is going to get split in half because there's only two people here. So green is going to get seven dollars, blue is going to get seven dollars. Then you come up to this brewery over here. There's two, four, six, sixteen dollars divided by three. So that's going to go five, 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 and then the extra one is going to go to blue. So blue is going to get eleven dollars here. And yellow is only going to get five, and that's how that gets paid out. And any other breweries don't have any money. You start a new week, you do three weeks, and then whoever has the most money wins the game.